Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Not the usual setting here that you guys are used to seeing on the main channel. This is some sort of behind the scenes content that we would normally do for Patreon and Floatplane members only, but a lot of you wanted to see the progress of my new studio build, so I thought I'd do that. But I thought before we get to the new, it probably makes sense to show you guys the current, the old setup. So I'm going to quickly do that, show you what I've been working with, probably go down to the current studio as well because my office and studio are currently separate which is part of the problem there ones are uh, this over on the second story of my house the other ones on the blowers the first story the ground level whatever you want to call it and it's right up the back so it's the opposite ends of the house on a different level so when i have to carry video cards in pieces downstairs to take b-roll and whatnot and then bring them back up here very inefficient very annoying anyway i'm just going to show you where all the benchmarking has been happening over the last three, four years, how long I've been doing it on YouTube for. Uh, and I've actually been bench, I've been here for 10 years now. And this is the third version of my desk that I've made. Uh, and I was quite happy with this version, but the latest version will be even better. Anyway, enough waffling in front of the camera. I'm gonna jump behind it now. Uh, also, autofocus is gonna be a bit scuffed. The audio is not gonna be as good as usual. This is kind of a rough run and gun vlog type video. Not what you're used to seeing on the main channel, but something different. See what you guys make of it. This uh, setup here used to look a hell of a lot better uh, because it, well, it, when it was set up originally, I put a lot of time and effort into it. And then it's changed a couple of times over the years of upgraded monitors and things like that. And then I've just not bothered putting it back together. Basically for the last two years, I've been looking forward to moving into my new studio. Uh, the build took about a year, crazy long, I know, but COVID and all that. So I've kind of neglected setting up up here properly. But anyway, originally I had my main monitor there, what you can see. And then I had a wall mounted monitor there and there. Uh, both of those monitors have changed. That's now a 27 inch uh, Nexius 4K 144 Hertz. It's sitting on a box. You know, we love to put monitors on boxes at Harbour Unboxed. Uh, I game on that and test on it. So it's a test system slash gaming monitor. This is a 32 inch IPS panel 60 Hertz, rubbish for gaming, but great for content creation. And then here's a Samsung, I think it's a 28 inch or something, 4K, 60 Hertz, just used for testing. So normally I'll have a test system over here. Actually, I'll open the door. There's a test system there. So I have one there, one here. There's a heap more under there. They're full computers ready to go. Uh, I have a test bench here if I need to use that. And there's another test system there. That is a file server. That is actually my main computer at the moment. Uh, the Threadripper system, it's kind of in pieces, but I'll update that for the new uh, studio. As I said, things are a bit scuffed at the moment. So this allows me to do all the benchmarking, uh, edit videos, save all the benchmark data. I can benchmark here and I can benchmark there. So I could be testing CPUs there, GPUs over here. Uh, and it's kind of cool. The only annoying thing is because it's a long straight desk, I do lean quite a bit across for the keyboard and mouse, which is something I've optimized for the current desk. You'll also see that down here, there's a groove out of a slot that, so it's a, it's a wall mounted desk, but it doesn't come all the way up to the wall. Um, the focus on this camera is terrible. I'm sorry about that. And my cables can all quickly tuck down here. So when I move various test systems and stuff, all the cables and devices like this, like my PowerMate, they can all uh, chuck all the cables off the table and they go down here. Now this used to be a lot neater under here on the uh, cable management shelf, but uh, yeah, like everything else, it's it's uh, been overwhelmed, I think is the best way to describe it. I had half as much stuff here initially, and yeah, uh, I just underestimated how much stuff I'd have. So the shelf's only five centimeters wide, and another problem with it is the gap from the, the desk here. Um, that gap isn't very big, so I can't put big stuff there. So anyway, that didn't work out as well as I'd hoped. Definitely better than previous things I've had, the cable management shelf, but just not big enough, basically, and I outgrew it like everything else. So that's a real quick look at the test systems and where I do a lot of the benchmarking, or the majority of the benchmarking. Uh, then around here, I have my main shelves with uh, lots of stuff on them. Uh, graphics cards and whatnot can be found over here. When I first built that, lots of people were like, oh, the graphics cards are going to fall off and it's going to be a nightmare. But yeah, no, that never happened over the three or four years I've had this for now. Um, 
motherboards they're kind of stacked three or four boards deep at this point so that's a bit sketch uh, more graphics cards there and then just products and crap and it's a mess I'll be completely honest with you it's a mess uh, I struggle to find things because there's just not enough room the CPU trays are a bit dicey right on the edge there I'm always worried I'm gonna grab a CPU and knock the whole tray down and destroy thousands of dollars worth of CPUs so I'm looking forward uh, to moving them into a drawer but anyway you've probably seen enough of up here um, time to move down to the new studio okay so now you'll uh, recognize that we're down in the studio so this is a four meter by five meter bedroom so for a bedroom it is fairly large but for uh, the harbor unbox studio on my end not so much so i film my b-roll in this little spot down here with the electric slider there which i want to do a lot more different things when i get the new studio but yeah there's not a lot of room in here and it's pretty packed um, as you can see uh, my wife is very forgiving. The hallway is full of mess down there. Uh, there's boxes here. It's another reason why I haven't done unboxing boxes. There's just not enough room. Uh, some acoustic dampening stuff there and on the wall over there, which I'll have to do in the new studio because the new studio is a literal echo chamber. But here we are. Um, yeah, so that's it. So this is where I started day one framing up the wall so I could work out just get my proportions right work out where the desk was going to be where I'm sectioning off a quarter of it for the car so there'll be one car in here so I just had to work out those spaces I started with the framing here I am with the drop saw 12 inch drop saw just cutting up some of the framing to well some of the timber to do the frame I suppose so get that done and there's a bit of MDF. So I use nine millimeter MDF as sort of like plaster, but it's a bit better because harder to bang uh, holes and stuff like that in it when I'm moving things around. And I can also attach things to it a bit more easily, a bit quicker and easier to work with. Just inspecting my work there to make sure it's all straight. And here's two sheets. I've sanded the edges of the MDF to give it a bit of a groove. Uh, it makes when you putty them makes it a bit easier to get rid of the joins. They're not as visible. So there's the backside of the frame. It's coming along nicely there. A lot of work to go still though. It's actually quite difficult building a stud wall within a confined area because you can't stand it up. So you have to use a slightly different technique to build it. Using the nail gun there to fix in some noggings, gluing and fixing in some more noggings. Probably should have got the step ladder, but it was on the other side of the wall, so I didn't bother here. And here's the wall mostly done. So the car will go inside there. So that is the garage area, I suppose. And here's a look at some of those V grooves, which I will go and fill up with some putty. And we'll look at that in a moment. So just join the sheets together that way. There are glued together with PVA wood glue and then a couple of fixing nails. Pretty quick and easy to do. And uh, it looks pretty good in the end. So there's the framing uh, complete there. And there we go, there's all the putty, puttied up all the nail holes, all the uh, V grooves. There's a look at that. And here's a section where I've already sanded. So you can't even feel the join. So that's a good indication that when you paint it, you won't be able to see it. Uh, and then, yeah, so plenty of sanding ahead of me here. Now, I feel like that's all I did on this project was sand. And now we've started on the desk. So the first bit of the desk is started here. So I'm using the same structural pine spaced at 450s and just now gun that together. That frame against the wall there makes sense why I've done that when you see some of the build a bit later on. Uh, just demonstrating firing a few nails here, uh, creating some more framing. So basically I'm making what's sort of like a bit of a, a pen, which will be the desk area, and that is six meters by three meters. So six by three, so quite a, a big area, about half the size of a double car garage, but I do like to have a lot of test systems. And of course we're doing some sanding there, doing the putty all over again, putting up all those gaps or the, uh, the joins or the nails and uh, yeah, starting the sanding. As I said, plenty of sanding was done on this project. And here's an overall shot. So I didn't bother showing you putting all the MDF sheeting on the outside. You've probably seen enough of that. Uh, this is a really cool tool, 360 degree laser. Uh, I'm using the horizontal line at the moment. And this is so I can get the steel structure in that holds the desk. Um, quite an interesting design this one that I've come up with. Uh, seems to have worked quite well though. 
So I'm just marking all the lasers on the structural pine, so I know where things have got to be mounted. So I just go around and do that the whole way around. Really quick and easy way to get things all nice and level. Basically, there will be three levels to this desk. There'll be the standard desk that you're used to seeing, which is the standard desk height. Then above that, there'll be a shelf where monitors will sit, and that serves two purposes. It hides a lot of the cable management. And then under that, I'll have a cable management shelf, and we'll get to that shortly. At the moment, I'm doing all of the uh, steel, which will hold the desk. The desk is going to kind of float there. There won't be any legs. So, yeah, it's, it's nice. I can spin around on my desk chair and not bang my legs into any... Uh, legs. So that's good. Any desk legs. So just cutting up all the steel at the moment, uh, just marking it out. And this is a bandsaw, a, port a portable bandsaw. Very useful tool. Uh, I love that thing. Makes very little mess. Great compared to using an angle grinder inside. You don't get sparks everywhere. And it cuts very square, very accurately. So as you can see, it makes me look good. Parts like that fit like a glove. With the angle grinder, it's a lot harder to get all uh, four faces perfect. There you go, that fit in nice and snug, barely a millimeter to spare on either side. And now I'm just going to tack weld that into place. Uh, using the clamps with a bit of offcut underneath makes it really easy to get it all level, nice and flush. And when you're doing it by yourself, that's just a yeah, quick and easy way to do that and then tack it into place. So do that first because you don't want to do a whole weld because that can create warping and movement within the steel. So sort of manage your temperatures there. And once I've got it tacked up, then I will weld across the top. Eventually I'll have to grind these top welds down. So that way the hardwood sits nice and flush on top and doesn't rock on top of the welds. And that'd be a bit, a bit messy. So we'll come to that shortly. Yeah, just welding at the moment. The uh, camera had a hard time with the lighting here, bit of flickering, so excuse that. But I think this looks really cool, uh, these shots. And there you go, a nice glowing weld. It's joined both uh, metals together really well. And now we're welding vertically, which is a bit more challenging. But again, the, um, the camera makes this look very cool. And for those of you wondering, wearing a uh, gas mask, basically um, obnoxious gases, because this stuff is extremely toxic, uh, will give you cancer. So when you're welding, especially galvanized stuff, make sure you're always wearing the necessary a protection there and of course you want to wear a, a welding mask because you won't be able to see if you don't wear one of those it'll blind you almost instantly and yeah, there's some welding done now I'm doing the next long bit of steel here which will support the the back part of the desk these are 8 meter lengths of 50 by 50 at 3 mil thick so they're very heavy duty steel uh, extreme overkill for the desk but I had it on hand and I wanted to make the desk nice and strong so flipping that around there without putting a hole in the wall, it just fit through that area actually. Clamped one end, tacked the other, and that's now in place. And now I'm working out the next bit. So again, lots of measuring, rechecking, measuring, marking, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and again, clamping the timber underneath makes it a lot easier to support the metal and get everything nice and accurate. The cats come in for a visit. Uh, the cats come and go. That one's Oreo. We call her Ori. So my daughter's cat. Again, plenty of measuring being done. And now more cutting with the bandsaw. Again, I love that thing. So good to use inside here and not get sparks and mess all over the place and burn holes in stuff. Really cool tool. And just tack welding all of this together. There was a whole lot of welding and grinding and cutting and stuff, which obviously I've skipped. I'm just showing you guys. Just some footage so you get an idea of what went into this, but yeah, many hours were spent getting all this square and level and yeah, all done. And now this end bit was a bit tricky again by myself, getting this all level and square uh, on, the, on the treated pine and just tacking it and welding it now. So again, no legs are required. I did put a 45 brace in this back middle bit. Don't think I got any footage of that. Uh, but I just wanted to make sure that the, the desk was going to be really strong. Because people, you know, tend to come in here and lean on the desk or whatever, sit their backside on it. And when you haven't got legs, you want to make sure it's very strong and it's not going to crack or, yeah, put any stress on the desk, create any problems. So now I'm grinding down those high points on the welds with a flap disc. They're awesome. Um, you can see here, there's the weld. Not my best welding work there, but I was pretty rough and quick on this because, you know, it's going to do the job. Uh, and then, yeah. 
just use the flap disc, get it all nice and smooth so the desk will fit on there beautifully. And there's a, an example of a fully grinded weld, perfectly smooth, and you won't get any rocking of the timber or anything like that. Uh, and now, oh, here's a quick look at putting some of the MDF cladding on the inside. So just fixing that in a place. That's that done. I did that the whole way around and then yeah, more and more and more sanding. Did loads and loads of sanding before loads and loads of painting. But yeah, this, this probably takes a close to most of the time I would say was invested in sort of sanding and making everything look neat because the more time you put into this, the, the better the overall uh, finish will look. So just sanding it all up. Um, cordless sanders make this a lot easier, a lot quicker and easier, you're not having to drag cables around all over the place. And my six-year-old daughter wanted to contribute and help, so we were in lockdown at this point, she didn't have any school or anything, uh, rather than sit on the computer all day or do whatever with her sister, she wanted to come out and help paint. She does enjoy painting, so she actually spent three hours helping paint. So big help there, we had to lightly sand her work afterwards, so she did a great job for a six-year-old, very impressive. That was good to see her out there. Now I'm doing the supports for the cable management shelf. So basically I'm putting some 30 by 30 angle iron the whole way around. Uh, I'm drilling holes in it right now, pre-drilling it. It's a lot easier doing it out here rather than when it's installed. Had to cut that one in half to get it in. You can see the 45 uh, arms are there supporting the desk now. Something I should probably just quickly note here, because uh, this is something I saw come up a little bit on Twitter when I posted a few photos of the progress. And then after some float plane and Patreon members had watched the video, was about using the pine framing and then putting steel on top. Would that be strong enough? So basically, the pine framing used is MGP10. So this is stuff used for building houses. They build multi-story houses out of this material. They space them at 450s, which is exactly what I've done here for the desk. Really, for the desk, it is extreme overkill. You could put tons of steel on top of the walls of this desk and they wouldn't collapse. Uh, very, very strong. So no problems there. Uh, the steel really is used in favor of timber to allow for me to span so far without any desk legs. So that's why I've, I've used the strength of the steel that way for spanning. But with the timber, I haven't spanned it nearly as far for the walls. So yeah, you get a really strong product at the end of the day and over-engineered in terms of strength and the load that this desk can take, it's really overkill. And here's where we are after, I'm not actually sure how long this took. This was quite a few days work. You can see the garage part for the car is done. I've got a bit of a door there that I'm gonna put some trimmings on. Uh, and then the desk. So we've started, it's all cladded internally and externally and most of the steel structure, I think all the steel structure now is installed. And now we're painting the cable management shelf. So this is two bits of uh, plywood, 12 mil thick plywood that I have glued together and clamped and created a thicker piece. There's Ori again. She's come to visit. Good to see the cats getting involved. She got a bit of paint on her at times. And speaking of paint, I should just take a moment to thank my wife for all the hours and hard work she put into this build as well. She did a lot of the painting, or most of the painting really. A lot of the cutting, measuring of timber and stuff like that. So a lot of work from her, so thank you very much. And here's the 360 degree laser being used again. Uh, I'm installing shelves now. So what I'm doing is, because I haven't cladded the other side of the wall, I'm taking advantage of that. I'm drilling holes through the MDF and through the structural pine, and I'm gonna use 200 mil long batten screws to come in from the other side to attach the shelves. So the shelves, uh, you won't be able to see how they're attached to the wall from this side. So it'll give it a really clean look. So yeah, just taking advantage of not having cladded the other side. And here we're ripping down some of the hardwood for the desk. I'm just doing this inside because these are heavy and I think it was raining on this day, so there was no point taking them outside anyway. But with all the sanding I was doing, there was so much vacuuming to be done. Basically sanding and vacuuming were the two main jobs I did during this build, I think. But, uh, ripping it down with the saw does a great job, the, the cordless circular saw there. And as you can see, that's now installed. I clamped them into place, bit of glue here and there, and more sanding, more and more sanding. So yeah, spent a lot of time puttying and sanding these desktops. It's utility grade hardwood laminated panels. So they did need quite a bit of a love and attention. So yeah, had to do quite a bit of putty and sanding there to get them looking good. Now I'm just routing a small sort of bullnose edge on it, just so it's not sharp on the edge. It really makes a huge difference. It's visually, it doesn't make a big difference, but just to how comfortable the timber feels, it makes a massive difference. So just do that with the router, then give it a light sand, and yeah, it comes up beautiful. So I did that on top and below. Uh, doing, it on, doing it below with this heavy router was a bit of a challenge, but anyway. And now we're vacuuming, so. Yeah, sanding and vacuuming were the two things I spent most time doing. 
So I'm just sanding the desk down now and the whole area, then giving it a light sand. I'm using a drywall sander here, real quick and easy way of doing this, and it's easy on the back. So just using, I think, 240 grit paper at this stage, just getting it all nice and smooth and getting it ready to... Oh, well, actually, I'm not gonna stain it just yet. I'm gonna do the top shelf, but I thought it'd be easier to do this before I install the top shelf. Here is the main desk uh, all installed now. So quite a bit of desk space. Uh, the reason for the narrow one meter gap between the left and right side is so I can swivel from left test system to right test system. Uh, and I've sort of done a lot of research and development into how, well, what sort of dimensions I need to use. And here we're doing the top shelf now where the monitors go. So just using the circular saw to cut through that. The masking tape is just so we don't split the timber, get any splinters. Uh, so you get a nice finish. And now I'm just using some liquid nails and a few batten screws to screw that in. So it'll uh, be nice and strong. It won't need any extra legs or supports to support the overhang for the monitors. And yeah, just join that all together. More sanding, more and more sanding as always. It's, it's actually very nice watching this at 3000% speed. because <laughs> I spent many, many, many hours, many bloody hours sanding this thing. I went through a lot of sanding pads, but it's worth it because it does uh, really improve the finish. So yeah. Here we are doing more and more sanding. I tried not, I cut out a lot of the sanding. I filmed way too much damn sanding, but you know, you guys wanted to get an idea of what's going on. And here we are, the external walls are primed. I don't think we've got a top coat on them yet. And all the hardwood tops for the monitors, the test systems and all of that are now installed. Just giving them a final vacuum, getting them prepped up so I can oil them. So I wanted to go for a natural look, just oil it rather than stain it. And uh, I, th I think it's come up quite good, which you'll, You'll see in a moment. So here we are, first coat of oil uh, going on now. This was about 12 o'clock at night. I couldn't go to bed. I had to get this uh, done. I was been waiting all day preparing it and I thought, nah, I'm gonna do it now. So came out at about midnight after working on this for most of the day and uh, got it all, all oiled up, which I have to say was extremely satisfying. It was great to have it done. And uh, again, it's great watching it at three or four thousand <laughs> percent, the speed that is. It's much quicker. I was out here for, I don't know, about an hour or so doing this. And yeah, the first coat looks pretty good. Gives it that, that sort of uh, wet look, I suppose. And I've started on the shelves here. I didn't film too much of this process because it's just building some shelves. Pretty simple stuff. Screw the, uh, the shelves in from the other side using the 200 mil long batten screws. And then uh, I made these legs out of the panels. So just ripped some 30 by 30 sections, routed them, sanded them, and you get some legs. So I'm just attaching those now, getting them all square and level and all that sort of stuff. And there'll be five shelves in total. And that'll just be for putting product boxes and stuff like that, storing products mostly. So basically just screwing the legs in from the top and then gluing them at the bottom makes them very strong. I did this on my previous set of shelves and you know, you could bang the legs very hard with products and stuff and they don't move. Uh, and yeah, a couple of paint tins here and there just to put pressure down in a few spots while the glue dries to make sure it's all making nice contact. And now I'm just yeah, putting the rest of the legs in, getting it all leveled up and just about done there. And so here's the desk after about four coats of the oil. And uh, I think it's come up looking a treat. So I've used floor oil here, very durable stuff. So it should work really well on the desk. I've really put too much time and effort into the desk for what is essentially a workbench. I'll be chucking computer parts over and test systems. I'll probably protect sections of it with like some GN mod mats and stuff like that. Cause uh, it is very nice. I think the timbers come up looking just fantastic really, again, significantly better than it needs to for what I'll be using it for, but I could do some filming here and use this as a fourth set. So maybe that'll be something I end up doing. But yeah, could not be happier with how this has turned out. I can't wait to start using it. Hopefully it'll only be a few weeks from now. Depends on how much more time I can throw at this thing over the next few weeks, I suppose. But yeah, that's where the desk is at. I've put a desk chair in there and used it, pretended I'm using it, and it, it seems to be perfect. So, this is the new studio. I'm probably not going to do too much talking here because the echo is horrific. 
But here is the new benchmark station, and here are some new shelves. Okay, pretty swanky. Still got to clean up on the floor around there, get it all nice and neat. Actually, an example of that would be around the front here. So we got a nice clean line with the floor. Floor needs to clean, but you know, you get the idea. The top where the monitors will sit. So this one is a similar design to the other one, just next level. So down at ground level, we have the cable management shelf here. And that goes the whole way around. I've got some PowerPoints installed in it. So that's very cool. Can you focus on the PowerPoint, please? There we go. PowerPoint. Uh, and the way that, so this is all steel. You guys will see the build process or will have seen it. I'm not sure what order I'm doing this in. Um, and then the cables all go down there. So that there is a 100 mil gap. Uh, there's a 100 mil gap there. So you can fit big power boards and whatever, power bricks. And then the shelf is four times larger and four times deeper. So I'm gonna be able to fit much more stuff on there, much easier. And then I've put some holes here for display port cables, HDMI cables and DC power plugs. So that's where I'm at. I'm continuing to talk as quietly as possible to reduce the echo, because again, it is really, really bad. Plenty of work will go into fixing that uh, shortly once I start moving in. But yeah, that's where I'm at. That's the build so far. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Uh, if you have any questions, of course, drop them below. I'll answer those. And if you want to see uh, part two, where I'm moving all the computers in, setting things up, doing all the cable management, putting things on the shelves, and then I'd be building the set, doing all of that. If you guys want to see that, I don't know if this is something you're interested in, let me know in the comment section below and I'll make it happen. But yeah, thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.